This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And you're just going to have to excuse the rain sound coming down behind me because it's Halloween time. And rather than find a more quiet place to record, I'm just going to let it be a spooky sound effect. Spooky Halloween. Spooky Halloween. It's so fun to say. God bless the My Favorite Murder Women for inventing spooky Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> So Sadie assures me that the spooky rain sounds pair nicely with her spooky story. And so I'll just let her take it away because I am really permanently in the mood for a spooky story. I love spooky stories too. Who doesn't? I know you do. I have a lot of people, like most people. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Take it away, Eck. So a few weeks ago, we asked our listeners, we did a little giveaway on Instagram and offered the opportunity to pick a story for us to tell. Two of them. Courtney's going to do one and I'm doing the other. So this is a story, a case brought to you by one of our listeners, Haley. Hey, Haley. Yay. Hey, Haley. And I got to tell you, she did a very good job picking it. I didn't think about it until after we did it. And I was like, ooh, what is that going to look like if it's a... Whatever Crappy story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did not disappoint. Yes. Tonight, we're covering the Halloween killer, Andrew Lackey. Oh my God. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. Already. Right mm-hmm. out of the gate. As children were out in Athens, Alabama, trick-or-treating and enjoying the Halloween night, 80-year-old World War II veteran and retired house builder, Charles Newman, he went by Charlie, was in the fight for his life. At 7.34 p.m. on October 31st, 2005, the Athens Police Department received a 911 call from Charlie. He could be heard yelling, quote, don't do that, and leave me alone. Charlie also asked, what do you want? His assailant, who could be overheard on the phone, responded repeatedly by asking, where's the vault? Before the call was cut short, you can hear the veteran's last words to his attacker, quote, come sit down and let me pray for you. Oh, bud, that would be me. Police arrived within minutes of the call. They knocked on the front door, and when there was no answer, they moved to the back of the house. Authorities noticed that the glass storm door was closed, but the wooden back door was open. There was blood on the storm door. Mm. They noticed a body inside the house, and so they went in. Charlie was lying in his living room in a large pool of blood. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Ugh. Detectives arrived and found a set of bloody shoe prints leading to the back door where they collected two $1 bills and a receipt from Long John Silvers. The bills and receipt were found folded together near the back door. The receipt showed someone had ordered a chicken sandwich and chili cheese fries. They also found a piece of metal that was believed to be an electrode from a stun gun. In a box sitting on the fireplace mantel, authorities found a bill of sale for a Rossi brand 38 revolver. Later, Doris Langster, who was a friend of Charlie's, would tell police that she sold the revolver to Charlie and that he typically carried it in the pocket of his robe. Hmm. They also found Charlie's dentures and the base to his cordless phone under a chair near his body. The crime had happened so soon before they arrived, police could still smell gunpowder in the air. Shut up. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. An autopsy would later show that Charlie was stabbed 54 times. What? Yep. He had wounds and lacerations to his head, including stab wounds to both eyes oh. and, a, and a broken nose. Oh, how old was he? 80. Oh my God. Yeah. He had seven wounds on his neck, one of which severed his carotid artery mm. and multiple cuts to his hands. Charlie had been shot on the right side of his chest. The bullet had traveled through his body and exited on the left side. Mm. They believed he had been laying on the ground when he was shot at very close range. So they stabbed him 54 times and then shot him. Mm -hmm. That's that's what they call overkill. Yes. Especially of an 80-year-old man. Yeah. Based on the characteristics of his wounds, it was likely that Charlie was dead prior to being shot. Yeah, I would guess. 
Charlie Newman's cause of death was ruled as a result of numerous sharp and blunt force injuries of the head and neck and a gunshot wound to the chest. Charles Newman was a World War II paratrooper with a 101st Airborne Division. Holy shit, flyboy. Yeah, man. I mean, that's like... The the guys. The guys. The guys. Yes. Uh, He also participated in the D-Day invasion at Normandy. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. He was a quiet man, mostly kept to himself, and was estranged from his family before his murder. Mm-hmm. Quote, I would never in my life have thought Charlie would go down without a fight, said Newman's minister, Reverend Patrick Lawrence. I know someone told me they wouldn't want to square off with Charlie even at the age of 80. Mm-hmm. Neighbors said Charlie would not let strangers into his home and that he would always look out his window before opening his door and he never gave out Halloween candy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Later that night, 911 dispatchers receive another call, this time from a man who says he's been shot. He was at a gas station and needed help. The officers arrived to find 22-year-old Andrew Lackey sitting outside on the curb. Andrew told the officers that he had been shot and he lifted his shirt. Police saw two gunshot wounds, one in the center of Andrew's chest and another on the side of his chest. When asked how he was shot, Andrew responded, quote, I have no idea. I don't know anything. I just know I've been shot. Mm-hmm. He would not give them any details of what happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Mm-hmm. Authorities couldn't help but notice a white Nissan Altima parked in front of the gas station. They could see blood on the outside of the car. Looking through the windows, one officer could see blood on the steering wheel and front dash. He also noticed two guns and a knife on the floorboard of the car. Hmm. Police on the scene called the sheriff's department and police stations in the neighboring counties to determine if there had been any reported shootings that evening. The Athens Police Department responded that it was investigating a shooting. Authorities told the Athens police they might have their murder suspect. Wait, their murder suspect? From the... They think that this kid got shot by got it sorry Mm -hmm. no that's okay yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah you've got a guy acting strange he's been shot he won't tell them how doesn't remember how Mm. not acting like a victim got it Mm -hmm. i was hoping for something really spooky and out there but yeah of course he (laughs) shot the old man or the old man shot him he managed after he stabbed him or while he was stabbing him Mm -hmm. he got the gun shot the old man went to the gas station called the police yes Thank you all for joining me on this journey. (laughs) It's been a long day. (laughs) It's been a long, long day. During the search of Andrew's car, officers retrieved the two guns. One of them was a Rossi brand 38 revolver Hmm. and a knife that had a broken tip. They also found, I know, they also found an insulated pizza bag, a police scanner, a rental agreement for the Ultima signed by Lackey, a stun gun with a missing electrode, a baseball batting glove, a utility belt, two flashlights, two black tube socks filled with nylon rope, a pack of six bottles of super glue, two gym bags, a pair of blunt... (laughs) Sorry. No, I'm laughing too. This is one of my favorite kinds of murders. I know it is. That's one of the reasons I'm laughing. Yeah. (laughs) A pair of blood-stained eyeglasses, an axe, a sledgehammer, a hammer with a towel wrapped around it, a roll of duct tape. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> We're still going to. Five screwdrivers. <laughs> oh. Several packs of batteries, a pair of night vision goggles. And a wallet, which contained <gasps> Lackey's driver's license. <laughs> a bazooka. Stuff, 462 razor blades. Nunchucks. <laughs> the car was on fire. There Seriously, was I mean, five dead women inside of it. He had a contract that he had Charlie sign. I mean, it's just like... Oh. He had a printout of his own computer searches. Yes. <laughs> Oh, my God. I know. Okay, and it's not funny that he planned this hard. It's funny that he had it all in the car, all yes. wrapped up. Because yes. He's... If you're new to this podcast, yes. one of my favorite things is criminals, murderers in particular, who 
<laughs> just lay it all out. Mm-hmm. Welcome to my car of <laughs> horrors, like <laughs> of all of the incriminating <laughs> evidence you could ever need covered in blood. It's like the freaking Little Mermaid of murder. Right. I know. <laughs> Uh. So, Andrew Lackey was born on October 29th, 1983. By all accounts, his childhood was normal, but his family moved frequently as he was growing up. He was described as distant, cold, and detached as a child, and had trouble making friends. He didn't have an established doctor as a kid, and his family wondered if he had learning disabilities or was possibly on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. He loved video games and spent most of his time on a computer. Andrew was known to have as many as four computers online at once and would play as many as seven computer games simultaneously. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing. I mean, of course it is. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, not a thing in my life. I can barely Mm -hmm. watch TV and, like, play. I can't can't watch TV unless I'm playing a game on my phone. It's a problem. I know I'm not alone, but... Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. I have to like pick something with subtitles so I can mm-hmm. actually pay attention. Mm-hmm. He sold various items on eBay and managed a decent living from the work. Andrew had one close friend growing up, Derek Newman. Derek was Charlie Newman's grandson, and the pair had known each other since the fourth grade. Wow. As they grew older, they maintained a friendship. Derek eventually told Andrew about his grandfather's wealth and told him he had a vault near his staircase full of gold, silver, and cash. Oh, boy. After his grandfather's murder, Derek told police that he and Andrew had gone out to Lonjong Silver's two days before Halloween and that Andrew had ordered a chicken sandwich and chili cheese fries. During the investigation, the computers at Andrew's apartment were seized. Detectives recovered messages from, quote, Jacob to, quote, Damien from January 2005 through July. Within the messages, Jacob wrote to Damien about an impending heist, his reconnaissance of the target, the house of an, quote, old rich guy and its vulnerabilities, his collection of supplies for the heist, the cash and gold that he believed was in the house, his intention to use a pizza bag as a ploy to gain entry into the house, and his desire for money. Wow. Yes. And he picked the most obvious spooky guy name right of all the names yes <laughs> like, no dude you should just be like kevin and just be mm. like no people think just a normal email exchange no definitely want to be damien mm-hmm. it's my true it's my true name in my soul uh-huh they also found a previous search history of charlie's address in his computer and also printed out and also laminated and mm-hmm. also hanging poster size mm-hmm. in his bedroom yeah in the like back pocket seat of the car Exactly. Fold-out style. Right. Detectives also found Andrew's blood DNA from his gunshot all over the crime scene. (laughs) They also matched the blood found on the boots Andrew was wearing the night of the murder to Charlie. God. I mean, like, at this point, I mean, you know, it's sort of like, I get that you want to be very thorough. Yeah. But I have never, in the history of this podcast, ever had... Uh, so much evidence. So to... much evidence. It's sort of like he manufactured more evidence. Right. Like, how? what else could I do to make sure that everyone knows I'm connected to the crime? Exactly. Good lord. Not that any more evidence was needed. <laughs> but forensic experts also matched a small piece of metal found lodged in Charlie's skull to the tip of the bloody knife that was found in Andrew's rental car. Of course they did. There is no doubt who had brutally murdered Charles Newman. Andrew Lackey was arrested and charged with murder as soon as he was discharged from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Andrew's trial began in late February of 2007 and only lasted three days. I'm not surprised. (laughs) No. (laughs) The prosecution laid out their mountain of evidence against Andrew. The defense's only strategy was to try to put some of the blame on Charlie's grandson, Derek. The defense painted him as a controlling influence in Andrew's life, saying that Derek manipulated Andrew to buy him things on multiple occasions, but there was no evidence to prove Derek's involvement in his grandfather's murder. Right. Andrew's mom, Sharon, testified that she realized soon after Andrew's birth that, quote, something wasn't right. She said that her infant nearly starved to death when he would not breastfeed. Whoa. Yeah. She said her pediatrician made a notation that her infant son, quote, failed to thrive and recommended he be given bottled formula. 
Sharon said her son would not take his bottle if he was facing her and that she had to turn him around in her arms so that he was facing away from her before he would eat. Oh, can you imagine? No. Later, she said that he was ambidextrous, used both hands equally, and that a physician recommended that she find computer games that would force him to choose either his left or right hand because he was taxing his brain with, quote, both sides firing. What? Which doesn't sound right to me, but... No, is that a thing? Hey, yeah. hey touch all, try all the, we have so many doctors that listen to this podcast. You guys, like, the most <laughs> intelligent people it's really listen kind of to just this a podcast. doctor podcast. It's doctors that... that um, prosecutor that or plaintiff attorney that <laughs> emailed us last time so that's it just let us know guys right. let, let us know was it overwhelming <laughs> medical community yeah well, it seems like a poor way to like this guy's obviously uh like on the spectrum and it has that like genius talent you know, yeah but like you know how you treat this even though it doesn't necessarily need to be treated you gotta get him force him to use one side of his brain just gotta rein him in because otherwise he'll be cooking with one hand mm-hmm. playing the piano with another <laughs> and that just freaks everybody out no mm-hmm. way i would love to be able to do two things at once with both hands not yep, that man. that's what the doctor does what right. my ambidextrous people can do but <laughs> <laughs> my mind is just woo, 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 do, 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 playing a whole all the instruments at the same time mm-hmm. so sharon bought her son an atari but by the time he was five he had conquered all available games <laughs> i love this i love it mm-hmm. he continued to struggle to relate to people and had no friends his aunt also testified that andrew was passive and nonviolent, but when someone came into a room he would turn his face to the wall so probably on the spectrum yeah The psychologist testified that he found Andrew had an average intelligence. He knew right from wrong, but clearly displayed signs of autism. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I'm just like, as a side note, I want to be very clear that people on the autism spectrum are much more likely to be victims of a crime rather than just going to say that. Yep. Rather than perpetrators. Um, There's no link to people with autism being more likely to commit violent crimes. I would guess that they were probably less likely to commit violent crimes yeah yeah but they get more press so when you of course um and there's been a lot of uh, mass shooters that are on the spectrum Uh and it just really so when i was researching this case I, i wanted to kind of dig into that more yep and there's some really like sensational headlines out there and you know, like autism linked to mass murder. I mean, just bullshit. like really, yeah. yeah. That's but when you look at the actual like studies that have been done, there isn't any correlation. It's just like men, right. you know, people with blue eyes commit crimes and right. so do white people. And so do like, yes, yeah. uh, people with autism also commit crimes, but there's no, n- and not at any higher percentages right. of anybody else. Right. Well, and I think mental illness in general, right? That's one thing you find if you, because they love to use mental illness, which is, a, you know, people with mental illness should get treatment so that they don't kill people, which we talk mm-hmm. about all the time. But people with mental illness are far more likely to be the victims of a violent crime than to commit a violent crime. Right. Generally speaking. Yes. Right? Yep. Yes. So Derek testified that he told Andrew that his grandfather was, quote, mean and was a multimillionaire. He also told him that he had seen his grandfather emerge once from the room under his stairs with a zippered bag of money. After two and a half hours of deliberation, the jury easily found Andrew guilty of murder. They now had to decide if he should be put to death. Wow. We're in Alabama here. Eh, Just, uh, yeah. Not, not that there's not anything good. Not right. looking good. Andrew's defense team tried to prove that he didn't go to Charlie's house with the intent to kill him, which is very important in death penalty cases. Right. There, have, there needs to be intent. He only wanted the elderly man's money. Andrew did use the stun gun on Charlie to try to get him to tell him where the vault was. They believed it wasn't until after Charlie shot Andrew that then Andrew decided to kill Charlie in a fight for his own life. Mm-hmm. Of course, this doesn't account for the serious overkill. It, you know? Yes. And not to mention the 900,462 other weapons that he brought with him. Right. <laughs> oh right. Like there was some, I, you know, like I don't know that I agree. I don't, I don't know. It's not up to me to decide. Right. <laughs> but I do think that probably the some of that overkill was triggered by Charlie fighting back. Not that it's Charlie's fault. Right. Absolutely. Especially if you're somebody who has self-control. If you have yeah. issues with self-control or 
God, what's the specific word I'm looking for? Um, impulse control. Thank you. If you have yeah. impulse control issues. I mean, we worked with kids with autism that were also had emotional disturbances and dis, you know, along with their disabilities and they would, they didn't have a good off switch. They didn't right. have a dial, you know, like where the mm-hmm. rest of us can dial it down and respond appropriately. I think there's probably a higher likelihood that if they're triggered mm-hmm. that it, you go from zero to nine million, not zero to four. Like, right. you know, more, yeah. So that would, that would definitely account for that in my mind. During closing statements of the sentencing hearing, the prosecution said that Charlie should have been able to feel safe in his home that Halloween night as he prepared to go to bed, donning a pair of blue pajamas and applying a breathe rate strip to his nose before he was surprised by an intruder. Mm -hmm. They also pointed out that Andrew was not desperate. He had plenty of money. District Attorney Christy Valls said, quote, he had no reason other than greed to go to that home and butcher an 80-year-old man to death. Mm Mm-hmm. Before his sentencing, the judge asked Andrew if he had anything to say. Andrew stood up and said, quote, I'm not going to ask you to spare my life. My life is over anyway. Derek was not involved in any way. I thank my family for being with me through all of this. Wow. Yeah. Derek burst into tears during Andrew's statement and was comforted by his family. The judge then sentenced Andrew Lackey to death. Wow. Andrew stayed on death row for five years. During that time, his mental health deteriorated and he was put on psychotropic medication to help him cope. He wanted to refuse any appeals for his case and be put to death as soon as possible. He asked to represent himself during the appeals process, but the judge at first refused. In October of 2010, Andrew was becoming more and more frustrated with his lawyers who continued to appeal his sentence. Andrew wrote the Alabama Attorney General asking him to drop his appeal. Wow. I didn't realize that you could appeal without your client's consent. That's crazy. Yeah, we'll talk more about it. Great. In July of 2012, despite objections from his legal counsel and the Equal Justice Initiative, Andrew got his wish and the court allowed him to represent himself in future appeals. Mm Mm-hmm. His defense attorneys believed Andrew was suffering from serious mental health issues, including major depression and suicidal ideations. He'd even attempted to take his own life in prison. After his failed suicide attempt, Lackey had described himself as being in a, quote, infinite loop, where he saw, quote, the end as the beginning. Oh, boy. They asked the court to do a competency evaluation on Andrew before allowing him to be his own counsel, but the court refused. What? Yeah. Andrew then dropped any future appeals and wrote a letter to the Alabama Supreme Court asking them to carry out his execution. Wow. In 2013, at the last hearing in Andrew's case, an attorney who was hired by Andrew's family intervened to help Andrew forfeit his appeals and obtain an execution date. So an attorney worked with him to help him kill himself. Yes. Wow. Yep. The Court of Criminal Appeals once again refused to review papers filed by the EJI, seeking a complete mental health examination before permitting an execution. I mean, thank God for the Equal Justice Initiative. They try so hard. Seriously. It's well understood that people who suffer from severe mental health issues that keep them from understanding right from wrong should not be put to death, and they are often found not guilty by reason of insanity. Mm Mm-hmm. But what about those like Andrew who are on the autism spectrum and have other underlying mental health issues who are also at a relatively young age at the time they committed their crimes? Where do we draw that line? Right. Totally. I don't know. My mind is spinning. (laughs) I know. I know. Wow. Mental health issues have a broad impact in death penalty cases. One in 10 prisoners executed in the United States are, quote, volunteers meaning that they're defendants who have waived their key trial or appeal rights to facilitate their own execution. One in 10. That's a lot. Yes. I'm not so surprised, though, because honestly, I say this, and I'm sure it would not be the case if I found myself in prison, but I've always said that I would prefer death over prison. I don't yeah. think I would do well in prison, but I don't fuck, I'd probably like be the library person and inspire other people or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and figure it out, but... I can definitely see choosing death over prison. Mm -hmm. But that is a lot. Yep. 
Mental illness also affects defendants' decisions to represent themselves, their ability to work with counsel, and the jury's perceptions of their motives, and whether they pose a future danger to society if they're sentenced to life in prison. I was thinking about that, too, when you were talking earlier, that flat affect that Mm -hmm. people with Mm -hmm. autism have, Mm -hmm. and how that could come across as evil, for example. Yes. Yes. When it's just, you are incapable. It's just how you're hardwired. Yes. Going right into that, (laughs) studies showed that jurors often misunderstand the relationship between mental illness and mitigating factors. All too often, jurors treat mental illness as a reason to vote for death rather than a reason to vote for life. So having mental health issues should be a mitigating factor to keep you from the death penalty. Right. But often jurors think you're more dangerous and more deserving right. to be executed. Well, and I probably would, if I'm being completely honest. And also, where's the line? You know, sociopathy, something that you can't really prove? Well, or... and I think that the, the thing, though, that we have to remember is that mental health is, is something that needs to be treated. And we treat it as a disease, like, you know, right. something that's like... Yeah, like you a, know. any injury. Right, but we don't treat it that way. We treat it like it's something wrong with you that you need to be punished for when indeed it's really, we have no system in place for people Uh, to get their mental health issues treated, which would keep us from committing so many terrible crimes. Totally agree. And then you think about the case that I can't, uh, will always be at the top of my mind when talking about these things, the Canadian guy who macheted the guy Mm -hmm. to pieces on the bus and now lives free because Mm -hmm. Canada has that kind of system in place that recognizes that but then machete guys are on the street <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's not a perfect shit. system but <laughs> no there's no perfect we no, also it's... can't be just like throwing them to the death chamber i agree i totally agree it's just so interesting to think about because i don't there's nowhere to land you know i'm mm-hmm. like yes i agree with that oh, but what about this and then i go back and oh, you know, oh, no. I, I and how do you know if it's enough mental health and you know yeah it's, well, i think yeah. for for us here in america we could just start with like an actual let's actually have a system in place that treats mental health issues wait what like let's start huh? with that what? What? <laughs> before people commit crimes mm-hmm. if they do commit crimes let's have a justice system that will offer them help to rehabilitate them as much as we can and if you can't then let's have a prison that keeps them safe the from Right. Right. Yep. Anyway. No, no. Another issue facing mentally ill defendants is if they are not medicated, their demeanor and behavior at trial may frighten jurors and serve as another basis for death. Yep. On the other hand, strong doses of antipsychotic drugs may cause defendants to appear at trial as if they don't care about the case, which can also bias the jurors against yep. them. Yep. Yep. So damned yep. if, and, the, and like you were saying with someone who's on the spectrum, it will look different also. Right. In November of 2014, public policy research conducted a nationwide poll of registered voters on their thoughts on the use of the death penalty on the mentally ill. The poll found that Americans did not favor using the death penalty on the mentally ill by a two to one margin. Mm -hmm. This opposition was strong across lines of race, gender, geographic region, political affiliation, and education. Wow. Wow. Yep, this one study, it said that Democrats thought this 62% of the time, Republicans were 59%, and Independents at 51%. They were all opposed to putting mentally ill to death. Mm-hmm. Which I was like, oh, we can agree on some things sometimes in 2014. <laughs> Wait, we shouldn't kill people who have serious mental health issues? Uh (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, boy. On July 25th, 2013, after eating his last meal of grilled cheese and fries with a side of turkey bologna, 29-year-old Andrew Lackey was put to death by lethal injection. According to a witness, Andrew was already strapped to a gurney when the curtain opened at 6 p.m. to allow witnesses to see him. He looked around briefly and then laid his head on the pillow. Mm -hmm. The execution order was read and Andrew was asked if he had anything to say. Quote, no, sir, I don't, he replied. Andrew's family was there to witness his execution. His parents sat silently holding hands while their son died. Oh, God. The drug seemed to take effect within a couple of minutes. Andrew's chest and abdomen convulsed slightly for several minutes. That was followed by what appeared to be several minutes of shallow breathing. 
He remained still and quiet for several minutes until a corrections officer closed the curtain at 6.15. Andrew was officially pronounced dead at 6.25 p.m. Man, oh man. In a statement released by EJI after the execution, quote, It is clear that the tragic death of Charles Newman was committed by a disturbed 22-year-old suffering from serious mental health problems. Mr. Lackey's execution was carried out by Alabama officials who can claim no such disability. Alabama has the ability to humanely imprison and treat its mentally ill citizens who have committed violent crimes without killing them, and it certainly should require a mental health examination before permitting someone with Mr. Lackey's history to give up their appeals. Mm -hmm. EJI staff worked with Mr. Lackey for several years, and we believe that both Andrew and the people of Alabama in whose name he was executed deserved the case to be treated more thoughtfully. It is easy to understand why there is anger and outrage about the murder of an honored elderly citizen who did nothing wrong. It is harder to understand how the premature execution of a mentally disabled person provides justice. EJI believes that the acceptability of capital punishment cannot be answered by simply asking whether people deserve to die for their crimes they commit. Rather, we believe a threshold question is whether we deserve to kill if our system of justice does not reliably or responsibly judge people disadvantaged by poverty or mental illness. Last night's execution of Andrew Lackey strongly suggests that the answer to that question is no. Very well said. And that is the wow. story of the Halloween killer, Andrew Lackey, and his poor victim, Charlie Newman. Man, you just way to open up the brain worms. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Haley, it was, that is... I know. Well, it's one of those stories where I, I, you know, and this happens a lot, it seems, when yeah. you actually, like, look into stories, but where I thought, oh, my God, like, look at this monster. Andrew Lackey's a monster. He, and mm-hmm. he did a terrible thing. I yes. do not want my sympathy for Andrew, which I no. have to come across that I don't care about his crimes because I very deeply do. And I think what he did was horrendous. Yes. And Charlie should have never, ever been murdered. No. And not in such a brutal fashion. Absolutely. But it it isn't as easy as that. We can't just say, yes, you are a monster. You deserve to die. Totally. We've, if we want to be a society that cares about each other, yep. we have to care about all of our people. And really think about what's ethical. I totally agree. And I Mm -hmm. think that's why I'm so interested in true crime in general is that, and I think most people who like true crime are very empathetic people. And Mm -hmm. maybe that's part of the drive to listen and try to figure it out is because I believe in people and I believe that we create these monsters most of the time. You know, I think that there are a small percentage of people who are born kind of bad and there's Mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it but i think most of the time we do or don't do things that result eventually in really bad things happening Mm -hmm. and so that's yeah i totally agree i I have sympathy for his experience and for the general experience of being somebody who is neurodivergent or who's born into poverty or who just had a shitty family you know i have a tremendous of general overwhelming sense of sympathy for the world that we live in and how it leads to shitty things happening Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know um and we obviously have to take responsibility for ourselves and our actions but at the same time i'm glad that cases like this come up where it's a more sympathetic version of that you know Mm -hmm. where he it's easier to see him as a human being who had a hard time who had issues stacked against him than say ted bundy or someone you know some shithead monster who fuck them (laughs) right right yeah yeah Yeah. i know it's also I i saw this documentary on television about assisted suicide for the mentally ill in i think denmark and mm-hmm. probably not Denmark. I don't know, but it's haunted me ever since this idea that these people, you know, they don't have a medical condition that a terminal medical condition, physical mental medical condition. They have a terminal sort of mental mental medical condition mm-hmm. and they can apply for assisted suicide for severe depression. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. 
so it's sort of that's sort of what he did right he just didn't want to live right well i think yeah that I think the question is, can someone with severe mental health issues, right, like before they're treated for them or whatever, like, you know, so like in Denmark, and I am all about, I really do think that assisted suicide is a valid thing for, to, sure. for people to choose to do. Yes, you should have control over that. But I also think that you need to make sure that all treatment options have been totally, totally explored and... And, yep. you know, make sure that this isn't just a temporary feeling that you're having that can you can be treated for and move yep. past. And, you know, I think that the, with Andrew's case, the real problem isn't so much that he wanted to die, you know, because that's not an unvalid feeling. It's right. that the system put it in place was like, cool. Yeah. So okay. callously, like, like, yeah, it's your choice. We're not going to look into this. We're not even going to do a mental health evaluation on you to see what's going on. Yep. Um, you know, and then, then you get into like the other part of it where, <laughs> so there are people who have, have mental health issues. The courts say, no, you can't be executed. They get treatment. They move past their mental health problems. Mm-hmm. They're well enough. And then they execute them. It's just like, yeah, so fucked up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you think you so think we've got up. some problems uh, yeah so uh, good job good job so sad so sad <sighs> I, know. I bet you i couldn't find a lot about charlie i bet you he just was a force to be reckoned with oh yeah and i bet just... you he kicked serious ass in normandy <laughs> uh, clearly <laughs> yeah he he just gave no shits so mm. Mm. I'm really sorry for him and his Thank family. You. They didn't get a chance to, you know, come back together before he died of natural causes and things that we should all be allowed to have. Absolutely, as people. Yes, the killing the overkill of an of an elderly person. I just never. I can't wrap my mind around it. I'm just like, what is the point of killing an elderly person in the yeah. first place? You know, it yes. just feels so crazy and so cruel. It's so well, it's it's like uh, imbalanced in a yeah. really horrifying way. Yeah, it's the same as like killing children or children, animals, yes. or when you've got yes. somebody who's so clearly vulnerable. vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an extra layer of very cowardly. Up. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it makes sense if Charlie was like, "Oh hell no, <laughs> fuck you!" Stabs, you know, no, like that. like he shot him twice. Yeah, he shot Andrew twice. I mean, it should have been. It should have been the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Man. Yep. Yeah, Charlie should have won that fight. So there's that huge bummer of a story, you guys. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a fascinating bummer though. I will mm-hmm. forgive a bummer if it makes me think, and that's going to make me think a lot. Mm-hmm. Those cases, I just yeah, it, that's those send me straight to the Google to start googling mm-hmm. more about things because I I just don't think I'll ever land on an opinion. You know, right. a solid, I feel this way. And this is why you and I would be amazing DAs is because like we said before, <laughs> you'd be like, yep. no, I we mean, I know he murdered, he murdered five women, but he just, we needed groceries. <laughs> <laughs> and then other times we'd I be like, there. fuck that guy. Yes, exactly. Going to just kill him right now. He doesn't even <laughs> get a trial. <laughs> we would, ugh. Uh, but it, I also think about how, I'm grateful that autism in general is more understood yes. than it was and early intervention and, you know, just an understanding in general, just to have more information and yes, that Andrew really doesn't sound like he ever had an opportunity to even really be diagnosed as a child yes. or a young adult. Absolutely. Um, and that would have no doubt really helped him in his life if he had a better understanding of what was going on in his brain and Mm -hmm. his family could also yep you know there's just yeah this crazy pushback against children having autism is also really disturbing for me and i'm not a parent so i and i i'm not a parent because i can't handle the regular challenges of parenthood Mm -hmm. let alone advanced challenges of parenthood but i do really very very strongly um I'm opposed to the idea that autism is a problem or a negative right. thing. Um, right. You know, I think that extreme cases of autism can cause, you know, make it really hard for the individual, no doubt, and the family. But I would say the vast majority of cases, kids with autism, it's just something very unique and special and something we need to 
embrace more in our Mm -hmm. society and be aware of and create space for and be supportive of because there's a lot to be learned from people with autism, Mm -hmm. especially considering that they are generally much more logical and less Mm -hmm. cruel and Mm -hmm. smarter than us and Mm -hmm. see things in a different way that we can absolutely learn from and on and on and on. And so get over yourselves guys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. I think we're learning that about a lot of things in our society that we have othered so many mm-hmm. different kinds of people, all most people, as a matter of fact, and that is changing quickly. Thank God. And let's keep it up because mm-hmm. we can do it. We have the resources. We have the intelligence. We have the numbers. We can make this world better and we should. Yep. I'm glad we solved all the world's problems. Um, As per we, usual. Should we transition to any much more important business like they will kill merchandise or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Let's, let's give the people what they want. <laughs> like magnets. <laughs> magnets. You know what I want to talk about? Tell me. The last names that people have. Oh, God. Thank you. I've... I've could not keep that in my brain for a week. I'm so glad you did. Yes. So on the, well, the last episode, our favorite character, Cindy Pancake, oh. started a very tiny avalanche of other people telling us the last names of the adorable, magical last names of people that they know. One of our listeners works with two pancakes, which, I mean, <laughs> what do you do I want yourself? to know, the listener didn't say if they were like siblings i assume right they have to be related Maybe. there cannot be two separate it's, pancake families in well, his job but what if there's a town where you know like where we grew up there's burton and strevel you know there's like really mm-hmm. common last names what if there's like this beautiful town in it's got to be in wisconsin there's the only place in the united <laughs> states where or something. Yeah. yeah oh god yeah and then uh-huh. you just go to pancake wenatchee town. wisconsin and there it's overrun with <sighs> pancakes i'm gonna go i need to be there with my people dr pancake professor pancake sheriff sheriff pancake i know pancake Ugh. s esquire <laughs> <laughs> pancake junior pancake the third Ugh. so other last names that have come up snowball Ugh. <laughs> like who gets so lucky <laughs> duckling <laughs> well that and, was another set of co-workers right that she works with somebody oh, last yeah, named a, snowball and, and last duckling. Named duckling come on it's not real i mean it's i know not. it is i'm not calling you a liar i feel like that was an international listener too i want to say either yes. uk or new zealand i'm just gonna i think it was the uk was, but i'm gonna pretend I think it was it's new UK. zealand i think it was uk no it was in new zealand just for the sake of this <laughs> story okay and this fantasy that i'm having because new zealand is fairyland and it would only make sense that it's it's everybody in New Zealand's last name is Snowball and Duckling. <laughs> so good. And then the other one, which is, <laughs> I don't understand how this happened. Cupcake with a K. Somebody has the last name Cupcake, Cupcake. with a K. God. It's like, did a five-year-old, when I was five, we got two black cats. And my mom asked me what I wanted to name them. And I said rainbow and balloon and she said no they're black cats and that doesn't make any sense (laughs) so she named them mocha and sable but it's as if i gave a bunch of people a last name (laughs) snowball duckling and cupcake with a k (laughs) and pancake and also how do i not know anybody with any kind of last name like that i know that's what i thought of after we were getting those emails i was like well who do I've traveled. I, I, we we have lots of friends. Yeah, We've the best lived. one I could think of was I know somebody with the last name Love. Yeah, but but no. that's not adorable. I mean, it's fine. That's <laughs> I like it, exactly. but it's not adorable like cupcake with a K. Yeah, we used to knew, know somebody with, whose name was Gaylord Divine, which is yeah, to this amazing. day the best name I've ever heard. Yes, but yeah, it's not cupcake, snowball, duckling, or pancake. <laughs> Uh, tell us more, you guys. It really was the best. It really, you know, it's been a really crazy couple of weeks, like forever. But to get these emails, we're like, yeah, I went to school with <laughs> cloudy <laughs> Jonathan Taffy Pants. We're like, shut up. <laughs> I was going to say cloudy meatball, but it's because I'm sitting here in my kids' playroom with 
<laughs> cloudy, cloudy with a meat. chance of <laughs> meatballs. Meatball would be an amazing last name. Amazing. God. So, yeah. So give us more. I need more. Us, ugh. And it's just fun to say. It is so fun to say pancake. I had no idea how fun it was until I had to say it 11 times. Well, had to. Chose to say it 11 <laughs> times in a row. Oh, man. It's good medicine. Yep. Yeah. What else? Anything else? I don't think so. I think we just got to shout out some of these hot babes giving us money every month making this podcast happen. They're doing it for us. Yes. And we appreciate it. We're if you want to sign up right now at our $10 tier, if you sign up. You get an amazing keychain. It's so good. Yep. So and I good. stole one for myself and I carried it around with me today. I unlocked my 95 year old grandma's door yeah. with my keychain. I was like, God, who oh, is this hot bitch? So cool. I'm I really feeling myself. Super accessorized. When COVID hit and I was making totes, or when we first started making our totes, uh-huh. I used one of the unbranded totes. Because I ironed the t- the brand the logo onto them, mm-hmm. I used one of them to go mail out masks. Because of COVID, I was making you, know, you guys masks, if you'll remember. And <laughs> I went to the grocery store with the plain tote full of masks, brought it to the mailbox. This was the very beginning when we didn't even know if we could touch mailboxes and stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> so just like put on a mask, run to the mailbox, throw the things in real fast, and then get back in the car. And Laura was like. Why are you using? Why isn't that a they will kill tote? And I was like, well, I just grabbed it. She's like, ah, it's a real missed opportunity. You could really be getting your podcast. Out there. <laughs> COVID dash to the mailbox and the dash back to. Oh, it's a real missed opportunity. Uh, God, Courtney, do you not even care about this podcast? <laughs> Not even showing the world your podcast okay. tote to the our, mailbox. Our 95 year old grandma knows all about us now. Thanks and it's to completely that blind. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot see anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Her neighbors might have noticed it, though, and been like, who? Oh, oh, tell me more. That explains our bump in listeners this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, who are we anyway. shouting out? Let's say some names. All right. Thank you so much to Caitlin Z. Uh, see, every time I hear a name with a Z, I assume it's zebra, and it makes me feel like you're cool. Yeah, definitely cool. Thank you to Lizzie. No last name. Love a Lizzie. Love. I do too. If I was going to have a daughter and name her Elizabeth, I would make her go by Lizzie. Yes. We call our best friend whose name is Elizabeth Lizard. So yes. If you're cool with that. You are now well, Lizard. Welcome, Lizard. Thank you to Barbara W. <sighs> Such a good name. Like... A uh, president's wife, but a good president's wife. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. 100%. Thank you to Christina. Or a president. Fuck that. A, like a president. Sorry, Seriously, Barbara. Courtney. God. God. I'm just internalized misogyny, guys. I just okay, yep. get you. But you know what? Get you. You'd notice because I didn't. I was like, yeah, anyway, president's wife. And yeah. I'm an asshole. We both are. Well, yep. thank, you <laughs> thank, for, you, Barbara. thank you for your support, President <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much to Christina G. Uh, my first girlfriend's name was Christina. So you're oh. probably a brilliant poet who sings an like an angel. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because she really was. does. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much to Kaz J. Oh, come on. I can't, I don't, I, I can't even I say anything about a Kaz I J. I know. I know. <sighs> like, I hope their name is Kaz. I know. Right. What would that be? Ka- Kaz, Ka- Cataclysm? Is that what that is? Kaz is short for? Ka- Ka- Catastrophic, catastrophic. I don't. It's just too good. I don't know. It's so good. It's Chaz. So good. It, ca- I don't. I don't know what don't Chaz know. is. Short I don't want to know. I don't, don't either. Because it's mm-hmm. perfect. Yes. Thank you so much to Susan. Great name. Solid. Yep. Beautiful. Love an old fashioned name. Don't ever change, Susan. Thank you so much to Carlin H. Carlin. I think so. C A R L Y N. That's a great name. Carlin. I've never heard that name before. Unless I misspelled it when I typed it over here to oh, read it. It's probably but just I don't Carly think I did. and you just put an N on the end. Well, Carly slash Carlin, we love you. <laughs> I think it's Carlin. Tell I, us. And her. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. There's no way to find out. Couldn't possibly go back to Patreon and find out. So. I really. Your name is now I Carlin. Actually, 
I did double check to see if I spelled it right. So I'm, I, there you go. We have Doing my duties. We have the power. No, never apologize for us <laughs> naming someone. My motto. Uh, last but not least for this week, thank you to the beautiful, smart Katie B. Yeah, Katie B. Like Katie. Woo! Katie badass. Katie badass. Katie bananas. Bodacious. We love you guys. What would it be like if it was the cutest name? Like Katie blueberry oh god that's katie binkles cute. but that's, that's jfb photos dog's name but they're the same maybe the same <laughs> person right. maybe yes maybe his dog is now a patreon supporter <laughs> i hope so I thank you that. thank you for your support binkles <laughs> there you go guys thank you for all of your support thank if you if you want to get down with us we've had a lot of instagram followers lately it feels really cool don't yep. know why. Keep it up. Tell your friends. It's pretty fun over there. It's at They Will Kill. It's also at They Will Kill on Facebook and Twitter. Yep. And our website is They Will Kill. And our email is They Will Kill Podcast, which is important, at gmail.com. We had a friend, well, a listener who is also a friend, message us that they messaged us months, a month ago, and didn't understand why they didn't get a response. It's because. They excluded podcast from yes. the Gmail address. Sometimes it takes us a day or two, but we have always responded we to always every respond. email we've mm-hmm. received thus far mm-hmm. at episode, what, like 55 or whatever. Yes. So I Don't can't make promises exactly. later if we get yep. too many emails. But right now, right we now. do respond to you. If you do not get a response from us in like three weeks, email us again. Check it out. Did yep. you put podcast at yep. the end of the email words. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't <laughs> No, have. I don't. No. I think I, on, I on, like don't do that all the time. When I sign us up for shit, I think I forget the podcast all the time. Oh, yeah. So just remember that. Mm-hmm. Rate, review, subscribe, please. Yeah. Pretty please. Yes. And put something weird in the subject of it. Yeah. Like cupcake with a K. Yes. Please. <laughs> but <laughs> not don't like don't one, spell K-U-P-C-A-K. Right, actually, right out cupcake, with, cupcake a K. with a K. Yes, please the, do that in the subject line. It I want be our heroes. I want seven reviews that have the same <laughs> title, cupcake with a K. So, you know, if I was on Apple and I was looking at podcasts to listen to, and the first seven <laughs> reviews were cupcake with the K, I would listen to that shit. I'd be like, yes. "What the fuck are they talking about?" Yes, we so guys, do us please, a favor, guys. Please do it. Make it happen. Mommies. I'm still waiting for another mommies. <laughs> Cupcake with a K, please. Uh, thank you, AJ Bergans, for our music. So much. Still so waiting much. for these twins to get older so that we can get them to make us some cool, like, spooky, spooky theme music or something. I know. God. Twins be, get in the way. Keep children alive. That's what right, about the us? twins that I love the most of anything. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, they're so cute. Uh, and remember. Um, oh, boy. We're almost there, guys. I don't know almost where there, there. where there, there is, but I feel like we're almost there. My gut yep. tells me we're almost there. So yep. keep it up. Keep loving each yep. other. Keep being kind. Keep being kind. Yes. Go vote. Fucking go vote. This Black Lives radical. Matter. Black Lives Matter. Go um, vote. Um, wear a mask. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we... Those are the t- top tickets right now. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. We love you guys. And we love you people, so much. All of you. And yes. goodbye. 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 Goodbye.